What is up guys, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're covering r slash am I the butthole. The timeline down below has all the timestamps so you can skip this waffle and go straight to the stories. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too as it all really helps out our channel. And don't forget you can follow us on podcast too now so you can take us wherever you go and this is updated weekly. And don't forget you can also support the channel either with YouTube membership or over on Patreon. But no pressure to do so, you being here is absolutely more than enough and I totally appreciate you. And with that being said, let's get in to today's stories. Much love guys. Our first story comes from Foster Fix. Am I the arsehole for telling a social worker the real reason my sister wants a foster kid? So this is a throwaway account. While my sister doesn't use Reddit, we have mutual friends who do. I'm a 28 female and I have a sister, 36 female. For the sake of the story, I'll just call Jane. Jane is married to Bob and they have two kids, a boy and a girl. My niece and nephew are wonderful kids and no trouble at all. They fight as siblings do, but nothing big. I love them. Now for about two years, I did live with my sister. It was a miserable time that really affected our relationship. She saw me as free labor, money and babysitting. Even when I managed to get a small part-time job, she demanded I hand over nearly half my pay or get out. It was hell and she took complete advantage of me. I moved out as soon as I could and we have little contact outside of family gatherings. Now after I moved out, she started complaining how she has no help with the kids or never gets a break. I babysit sometimes but I have made it clear, just because I am off work doesn't mean I want an 8 hour day with my niece and nephew. Anyway, she started talking about how she wanted to foster a kid. Not a kid, but a teenager. I pressed her for more info on this. She wanted to adopt a teenager so she has a living babysitter for her kids. This is her logic. I want a kid around 16 or 17. You know, someone who may have been in the system for a while. They can share a room with your nephew. She only has a three bedroom house or sleep in the garage. They can help me with housework, chores, cook and help me with my business. She bakes and sells cookies. Also babysit the kids, so me and Bob can go out sometimes or have some alone time. They'll be grateful for a home and won't complain. I won't have to pay them at all. And then when they turn 18, I can just sign up for another foster kid. A teenager will be so much easier than a little kid. They will just be grateful to have a roof, food, siblings if they've been separated from their real ones, and clothes. I was horrified. I told her it was a horrible idea. She didn't listen to me. She went on with it anyway. About a month ago, a social worker showed up at my apartment to ask me some questions about my sister. She had put me down as a character witness or something like that. I immediately told a social worker why my sister really wanted to foster a kid and how she treated me when I lived with her. The lady thanked me. My sister called crying, saying that she wouldn't be considered for any adoptions or fosters. The social worker told her that they felt her home and her weren't a good fit. She asked if I said anything and I told her the truth. She went off at me, hung up and we haven't spoken since. She has sent some angry texts. A couple of family members are on her side. They think foster kids are fucking dogs or something and would be so happy to just have a roof and would gladly do all the housework. So, am I the asshole here? Edit, so, wow, I didn't know my post would blow up like this till I got home from work. Thank you everyone for the kind words, messages and awards. Remember, no child is in control of the circumstances that may have landed them in foster care system. They are children and still human. They deserve a loving home and care. Do right by a foster kid and thank you again. Feel free to message me or chat if you like. Holy shit, when I came into this, I wasn't expecting that. Who thinks that way? The logic that's going through their brains to say like, yeah, slave labor, that's a great idea. Let's foster a bunch of kids and we'll have a whole sweatshop going. My goodness, man, who are the... That's, that really triggered me, that one. And OP did totally the right thing by revealing it up front, even if it is her sister. You've probably just saved a child from a pretty miserable life, I could imagine. Oh, God. Because even when that person, that child turns 18, she's probably likely to kick him out and then get another one. I mean, God. Wow. Let's go straight down into the comments to see what we can find. Nothing sinister says, not the asshole. you told the truth and saved a teenager from a terrible life of being used and dumped for another, which is no way to treat anyone. It is a foster child, not a slave. OP replies to this saying, I said that, but her logic is, it's not slavery, I'm giving them a home, food, clothes and everything else. 
Yeah, and making them watch your kids eight hours a day, cook dinner, and do everything you are feeling too fucking lazy to do, because life is hard. Rabies Positive says, not the arsehole, what the fuck is wrong with your sister? OP replies again saying, she believes that teenagers in foster care will just be too happy to have a home, period. They won't need the attention that a little kid does. Just to be clear, her husband was against this too, but she went ahead and started the process without him knowing. Holy shit, imagine your partner doing that behind your back. I think that would be like a huge red flag and a reason to get out of there immediately. Lalaith says, not the arsehole, kids aren't slave and shouldn't be treated as much. I'm glad you got out of living with your sister because she sounds difficult to live with. You absolutely did the right thing to prevent a child from being treated like you did. Opie replies to this saying, she was very difficult to live with. My first job only paid me 400 at best sometimes and she would demand 350 in rent or get out. She'd walk around naked, don't want to see my sister naked, walk in my room and take stuff, lose it and then not replace it because it is in my house. Once I woke up to my nephew asking me when I was going to make breakfast, my sister and Bob were gone. They left for a weekend and left me with the kids. I started drinking pretty heavy just to deal with the stress and even slept in my car sometimes so I wouldn't go home. It got so bad that I had a system of climbing in and out my window to avoid her. Oh my god, it's getting like worse and worse every time OP posts. Get, just go no contact with that sister, man. And that just sort of gives us a taste as well what the foster kid is going to experience when they go into the house. Holy shit, never let her get a foster kid. You just feel sorry for the kid she's already got. Wow, so for the first story, I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story one. Our next story is from a throwaway account. Am I the arsehole for asking my dad to get me feminine products because my boyfriend refused because he felt too embarrassed? I'm currently on my period and have some bad cramps today. My whole body is aching and I'm feeling very low energy. I'm nearly running out of pads so I kindly asked if my boyfriend would go down to the local store to get me some pads, chamomile tea and painkillers. He started huffing and puffing and said he wouldn't get that stuff for me. I asked him why and he said it's too embarrassing. I didn't have the energy to argue so I texted my dad and asked him if he could get that stuff for me. He lives nearby and is currently working from home. He was on his lunch break. Fortunately, he arrived within 15 minutes and got me everything I needed, and then some. My boyfriend got so pissed, he said that just because he refused, it doesn't mean that I should go running to my dad. I asked him why that's an issue, and he didn't fully explain himself. He just said that's his job to get me stuff like that, which makes no sense because I asked him and he refused. He was nagging the whole time and had no patience for that. He continued being moody and said that was disrespectful to me. We're gonna go straight down into the comments with this one with Abuja saying, not the asshole, lose the boyfriend, but keep the dad. <laughs> OP said, keep him the dad. Loki the mischief of God says, boyfriend is upset because your dad showed everyone how fragile your boyfriend's masculinity is. My name Spaghetti says, not the asshole, call your dad back and ask to pick you up a new boyfriend and some chocolate. It's rougher than the usual month. But seriously, if, and this goes for all men reading this as well, you cannot manage to occasionally go to the store like a real person and help buy things your SO needs every single damn month, you really have no business being anywhere near that particular monthly time bomb. Consistent Cheesecake says, Not the arsehole, your boyfriend probably feels ashamed of himself after your dad showed him how a decent person behaves and how he should be. Why are you wasting your time with this arsehole? <laughs> I kind of think I know where this one's going to go when we vote for this because, you know, it's obvious but <laughs> anyway i'm gonna turn this one straight to you guys what do you guys think of this story let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story two and our next story is from a throwaway account i'm either asked for going low contact with my sister and calling her a fucking freak and that her art isn't worth the paper it's drawn on me and my wife were expecting our daughter due early august two weeks ago she was born but passed a day later were devastated and struggling with such a major loss. I texted a picture of the baby to a family group chat and told them what happened and everyone expressed their condolences, except my sister, 18 female. Yesterday, she texted my wife a picture of a painting of our baby, saying something like, sorry for your loss, she was a beautiful baby. It'd be 20 pounds when you can, or I can upload it to Insta. Love you, sorry about this, if you wanna talk, I'm here. My wife didn't react well and got extremely angry insisting I talk to my sister about this, which I tried to calmly, since she crossed the boundary and could have texted me before this. She didn't apologize and said it was just to remember the baby and insisted she didn't do anything wrong. 
I lost her and called her a fucking freak for drawing our daughter, that her art isn't worth the paper it's drawn on, and I hoped she'd one day understand what we're going through and hung up on her. She'd been texting and calling non-stop, and my mother says she's really upset and apologetic. My mother thinks I'm an arsehole here as my sister was trying to be helpful and there's no need to overreact, especially since I'm 29 and she's only 18. My wife wants nothing to do with her anymore. Am I the asshole? Wow. Opie, if you do listen to this, I'm so sorry for your loss, bro. And, you know, devastating. I can't imagine what someone would be going through. Insane. But when I first came into this post, I thought it was going to be like a choosing beggars post, you know, where they ask for art for free and all this kind of thing and then refusing it. <laughs> But what, I can't, I can't imagine what the sisters, what was going through the sisters head to do that, just to draw a picture after she received a photo and then say, oh yeah, that's going to be 20 quid. Even though they didn't commission her to do this or anything, or then pretty much say, if you don't give me the 20 quid, I can upload it to Instagram. I mean, fucking hell, man. I know she's only 18, but still, she's got a lot of growing up to do. Wow. Let's go straight down into the comments to see what we can find. Kid Sarah says, I just, she expected you to pay for something you didn't ask for in the first place. And OP says, yeah. Fade 89 away says, my brain short circuited a little bit over that. How can someone really be that selfish and oblivious to how messed up their actions are? I'm sorry she put you and your wife in that position and you are 10,000% not the arsehole. Akam says, not the arsehole, especially given what you're going through right now. I just want to clarify your sister is asking for money, but you didn't ask her to paint anything. Your words were a little harsh, but understandable. I hope you and your wife can forgive her one day, because it really does seem like just a stupid mistake on her part, especially since she's making efforts to contact you and is very apologetic about it. OP says, yes, I didn't ask her to paint our daughter, and she did try to charge us for it. Small person says, yeesh, that will not go down in the art world, or any world for that matter. That's quite ridiculous. Definitely not the arsehole. I'm very sorry for your loss. Komlo says, My friend lost her dog a few weeks ago, and her brother, who is an artist, painted a beautiful picture of them together. He gave it to her as a gift, and he was overjoyed that he made her something so thoughtful. The sister lost her close relationship for $20. She could have made something beautiful, if she's a good artist, for a grieving brother. She could have asked if it was okay to paint a picture of their child as a thoughtful gift, and she chose not to. What an absolute dumpster fire of a person to do that to someone grieving. Alert Potato says, Not the arsehole. If she had simply created the art and shared it with you, that would be one thing. But that isn't what she did. She created unsolicited art of your child and then asked for payment. That's disgusting. Your Yogurt replies saying, Oh, she didn't ask for payment. She expected payment, like her bro had commissioned her. And then worse, it's implied she put this up on her Instagram for internet clout. I know this girl is 18, so this can be immature, but yikes. And I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story three. Our next story comes from Antisocial, apparently. Am I the arse for not accommodating my sister-in-law's food allergy? 38 male, married with three kids. Recently, my mum turned 65 and begged to see her kids slash grandchildren on her birthday. I have an older brother who's married with four kids, ages 2 to 12, only youngest two are his. A much younger brother, 23, who's single. My brother and I offered to host a weekend get-together. My older brother had to work late the first night, but his wife Emily, fake name, offered to come earlier in the day with the kids and cook dinner for everyone. Emily is a great cook and her parents own a local restaurant that's well known for a dish that serve once a month. Emily is the chef for that dish and my wife and I have had it but my mum and brother haven't tried it. I asked Emily when she arrived that day if she would make the dish and she agreed. I had most of what she needed but I told her to text my younger brother for any extra items and I would pay for them. Dinner went great, food was wonderful but at some point my mum took a picture of her plate and sent it to my older brother with a caption that said something like, you're missing out and then it all went to shit. The reason Emily only makes this dish once a month at the restaurant is because she's highly allergic to one of the main ingredients. Her parents are weirdly protective of the recipe and won't let anyone else cook it. I assume this was common knowledge within my family, but she and my brother have only been together about five years, so maybe it hasn't come up. In any case, my brother was furious that I asked her to make it. My little brother said I was disgusting and my mum dramatically claimed that I put her in danger. Frankly, I think the reaction was ridiculous. She's a grown woman and clearly knows how to manage her allergy. It's not like she ate it. Also, Emily didn't seem upset about anything and was off watching a movie with all the kids who didn't hear any of this. I kind of thought it had blown over after a couple hours until my older brother got there around midnight and found Emily in the kitchen eating some cereal. 
He told me it was bullshit that I made her cook a meal. She can't eat and then let her eat cereal. Again, this woman is a grown up. She could have asked my little brother to get her something else to cook for herself, but she didn't. At that point, I was tired. My wife had cleaned the kitchen and Emily had gotten the kids in bed. So when my older brother pulled out a chicken breast saying he was gonna cook something for Emily, I put my foot down and said no. I feel like my family babies Emily, as it is. Lots of reasons for this. I understand it, but it's frustrating. And I wasn't willing to let my brother make another mess cooking a whole other meal at 12 a.m. The whole rest of the weekend was awkward and strained and basically ended with my mum and younger brother telling me that I ruined the whole get together. Do I not get to set boundaries in my own house? I think we can pretty much see that OP is going to be the arsehole in the situation. So there is an update which I'm going to read immediately here. Edit and update. I can see that I'm definitely the asshole. Got it. I showed my wife this post and the replies this morning. She hasn't commented much on the situation and said today it was because she was so embarrassed by my behavior that she didn't know what to say, but she agreed with almost everyone. I called Emily this morning and my brother answered her phone. I talked to him for about an hour and then was able to apologize to Emily. She explained that she said yes to cooking because she knew how much I liked the dish and also she doesn't think I like her that much. So she was worried I would be upset if she said no. My brother also explained that her allergy has topical effects as well and the cooking process gets the allergen everywhere which is why she hates cooking it so much and also why she can't make anything else for herself at the same time. Please note that I know I was the asshole even without this info, it just makes it worse. It also makes me look at the situation with her parents differently because they've been having her make this meal for years and downplaying the skin reactions like it's not a big deal. I work in a really cutthroat, callous environment. It's not an excuse to be thoughtless with my family, but I do think it has some clear effects in my general attitudes towards other people. I do like Emily. She's improved my brother's life profoundly when they got together, which is part of why my family loves her like they do. Emily was more gracious accepting my apology than I deserve but she did also tell me that she won't be accepting invites to my house again for a while, which I think is fair. I was mad at first reading a lot of the comments, but I needed the reality check. Thanks. And I like that ending to that story. That is a nice ending to the story. He realized his mistake and he apologized. I mean, it doesn't, is it, it doesn't excuse his behavior to begin with and the way he acted was absolutely asshole -ish. And before we do go down into the comments, you have to realize that some of these comments were probably upvoted before the edit was in place. So here we go. Midnight Malaga says, you're the asshole. Emily offered to make dinner for everyone, incredibly generously, and you asked her to make one thing that she couldn't eat herself. And then you refused to let her husband make her a meal after he got home because you didn't want the mess. You're an unbelievable asshole. Never a crumb replies to this saying, no, it's even worse because you see, OP didn't do anything. His wife cleaned the kitchen and Emily entertained the kids and put them to bed. I'm guessing he didn't want his brother to cook because then OP might actually have to do something. Stud ass party says, right, I almost spit out my coffee at OP's, I'm so tired, and then detailing how his wife and Emily did all the work. Risky Otter replies to these comments saying, you know what else is pretty funny? His original Am I the Arsehole post was titled, Am I the Arsehole for asking visiting family members not to cook in my kitchen after midnight? So I guess his original line of thinking was that people would agree with him that it's pretty crazy to cook after midnight. Also, he was originally trying to spin it as a request, I guess. Too bad, we will never know because he ranted about it for over 3,000 characters. Sound like Emily is very aware of OP's assholery and just avoids him. Late edit and please correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like OP asked Emily to cook this thing, a thing he knew she got into arguments about cooking with her own parents after she was there, then suggested if she needed her husband to pick her up more, she could. The husband that got home too late to use OP's kitchen? I mean, either that or Emily chose to keep this upsetting but unavoidable fact from her husband, which seems very unlikely. Did OP seriously think it was appropriate to stock his kitchen in anticipation of her cooking something she can't even eat? Quintessential says, I feel like it's been hugely glossed over here that Emily has tried to stop making this dish completely, but her parents won't allow her to because they're protective of the recipe, to the point that has caused arguments between them and Emily's not willing to keep fighting about it, so she just keeps cooking it. You know all this, but you still ask her to make it for you and your family more than once. Pretty sure your brother was mad because that's incredibly disrespectful. I wonder how it feels for Emily to try and opt out of cooking something that she's allergic to only to be told by a family that her health isn't important to them. And then she goes to your family's house where you do the exact same thing. Plus it sounds like she cooked, then tended to seven children while you all ate. No wonder her husband wanted to make her something other than cereal. I almost never comment on these, but you're a massive asshole taking advantage of someone that's just too nice to stick up for herself. You're the asshole so hard. 
Wow. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story four. And our final story is from Severe Standard. Am I the arse for my public freakout? I'm sick of people assuming I don't speak Polish because I'm Asian. Apologies for my shit English. <laughs> my dad is Mongolian, my mum is Polish. I never met my father as he died before I was born. I look entirely Mongolian, though I'm basically Polish as I grew up in Poland my entire life and know nothing about Mongolia. My whole life people assumed I didn't know Polish and would speak to me in English and it's fucking annoying as hell. Half the time, I couldn't even understand the English. I was at a restaurant yesterday and my waiter comes up to me and asks me in English, hello sir, can I take your order? And I respond in Polish, yes, I'd like this and this and this. And he asks me in shitty English again, would you like diet or regular Coke and fries or Soroka? And again, I said, listen, dude, I speak Polish. He kept speaking English to which I said in Polish, asshole, I've lived here my whole life. I speak Polish better than I speak English. Polish is my native language and stop assuming otherwise and take my fucking order in Polish because we live in Poland. He looked shocked, went quiet and then took my order. My girlfriend was fucking pissed and said I should have just done it in English. But fuck this shit, I've had enough of this my whole life and especially since I told him to speak to me in Polish and he kept going in English. Edit, stop assuming slash asking if he didn't speak Polish. He was Polish and I heard him speak perfect Polish before and after. Also, you can't get a job working in customer service here unless you speak Polish. I think that's kind of obvious. Yes, sometimes we have Ukrainians who don't speak Polish very well, but it's good enough to get the job done. That was kind of my thought when I was going through it there. I was thinking, is he assuming the server actually speaks Polish? <laughs> and with the first comment below, I'm going to be called out for my stupid thoughts. Respect Jail Forever says, the comments proposing that the waiter didn't speak Polish are bizarre. There's no way the waiter wasn't a native Polish speaker. At the barest minimum, it would have come out that he was a non-native speaker when he took the order in Polish. OP replies to this saying, yeah, I don't understand those comments either. They're pretty stupid. You're right, there's a lot of Ukrainians who are waiters and other load skilled labor, and they often have thick accents, but they easily pick up Polish as other languages are so similar. I've seen some Africans and Middle Easterns doing job for Uber Eats, and such too, and they spoke at least some Polish, if not fluently. Like and Dark says, not the arsehole, you corrected him twice, started gently and ramping up. He's the one that basically ignored your corrections twice. The only way he's not the arsehole is if he didn't speak Polish, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Kinikos19 says, not the arsehole, people who don't have to deal with microaggressions aren't aware of how much it stress it causes. It sounds like you snapped, but don't take it out on the person serving your food, for your sake more than theirs. You don't want spit in your food. Ovalisk2 says, not the arsehole, my wife is Chinese. It wasn't until after we met that I found out this type of shit happens to people of Asian descent here in the US, constantly. Our friends who are American with no accent get asked where they are really from after saying a place in the US. They constantly praise her English as if she's a fucking talking dog. You are completely justified telling this person to fuck off. Racism by stupidity and small mindlessness is still racism. And for the final story, I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story five. Anyway guys, once again, thank you for being here. Thank you for the support yesterday. It really meant a lot to me. Some of the comments you guys were coming out with, absolutely beautiful, insane stuff. And I just really appreciate you. There's another video on your screen right now if you'd like to watch another and I will see you in the next one. Take care now, much love.